Clerk, call the next bill on special order calendar, please. On page 27 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 301 by Senator Williams relating to fertilization. Ladies and gentlemen of the body, I come to you today with what I believe to be and what many pro life proponents believe to be the most important piece of pro life legislation that we'll consider or that we have considered this session. What this bill does, Senate Bill 301, which is before you, it's a one page bill. It defines what a person is. It defines that a person, an individual is a person, all humans from the moment of fertilization and implantation into the womb. What does this bill do? Do they not make a substitute to say it? This bill defines what a person is. That's the bottom line. On the back of your bill, you'll see a fact sheet about Senate Bill 301. You can see the reason. If you don't have a copy of it, a page has delivered it to you, to your desk. Oh, I didn't know that. That's what I'm trying to do. It defines what the term person is in the Code of Alabama, 1975. Get all the stuff on it. it tells you the reason for this. What are some of the common issues that are raised in this conversation? It's, it's more complicated. The first thing that you need to know is that no state has passed a personhood statute or amendment to the Constitution. Number two, this bill would stop abortions in the state of Alabama. Number three, four or five in six should be read there for yourself. At this time, I'd ask for favorable consideration. Well, I'm, I'm pro-choice. I've always been pro-choice. I believe people have the right to make those decisions themselves and believe the government should stay out of people's personal life, and that's part of it. You know, I um, personally think that, you know, we had a male sponsor of that bill and a lot of men who, sp who supported it, and I was like, you know, you will never know what it feels like to have unintended pregnancy. And, you know, you should probably stay out of the discussion. But... <laughs> It is what it is. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the gentleman yield? Yes, ma'am. All I can say is, really? Hey, Ron. Yes, ma'am. I just got to really? read the committee substitute um, that was adopted. I have a lot to say bill. about this. Just put it in line um, with your bill. Because Tom didn't have his amendment ready. In this ready bill, there are no exceptions to save the life of the mother. I just want to make sure you, you understood this that. This bill does not define anything about abortions. It defines what a person is. I know. But... If yeah, a I woman just was going becomes pregnant. What's that? Now? Maybe she doesn't even know she's pregnant because you've never been pregnant. Yeah, so it, you it, know it, what it, that feels like. But um, that's right. You may go for six yeah, weeks I'm telling you, and never know that you're pregnant. When it passed. Didn't have Tom Lake's amendments on it. So there let's was say a during that period of time, in the House, committee. something happens. And so that when you adopt the committee substitute, that'll be just like the House. You know, the the fetus is. Um, okay. No, aborted thanks. naturally. Would the mother then be prosecuted for murder? So I didn't know. What? No, I'm sorry, Miss Todd. Would the woman be prosecuted for murder? If why not? It's a person. That's a natural occurrence. Well, what if she did something that you know she didn't know she's pregnant? She did something to cause that. At that point in time, that would have to be dealt with by additional statutes that are not presently determined in the code. Will you admit that the, the reason that you all are bringing this bill forward is that you hope to challenge the Roe v. Wade Supreme Court decision? Without a doubt. Okay. It is my, it is my desire that we overturn Roe v. Wade. Well, that's my for you to say because you're a male and never get pregnant, never have to carry a pregnancy. Oh, well, not. Um, okay, so it is your intent that we, you, you're, you want to have this. You actually want to have this challenge, so it ends up in the Supreme Court, correct? It would be fine with me if this was implemented in all 50 states, and at that point, it eliminates. But you know that's not going to happen. The likelihood of that occurring is very slim. Right. And the Supreme Court decision in Roe v. Wade was settled in 1973. Yes, ma'am. We've lived a long time with that decision, with some revisions here and there as technology 
brings us more information. Do you know how much it costs to take a case to the Supreme Court? I just wanted to see what was on it. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Minimal. Who's going to pay for that? that? You're not prepared to introduce that to litigation, which would take it on the Supreme Court? Well, you know it's going to get litigated. Yep. You know it's going to get litigated. Well, it's got the so who but pays for that litigation? If they love me, if they've done that, start with it. The people that are promoting. No, the state of Alabama has to pay for the defense of the statute. The defense, that would be correct. So we're going to incur hundreds of thousands of dollars and more than that could be millions After this, there's, um, in litigation on this bill. And you know that. You know that. I anticipate someone would, would probably yeah. call oh, okay. Well, 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 let's just be honest. Just you know that. And um, no doubt that this issue is very polarizing. No doubt. Very polarizing. Yes, and people on both sides feel very, very strongly about it. And I feel strongly about it. I am pro-choice. Yes, ma'am. Um, I believe women have the right to make that decision with them and their doctor and their God as they see fit. And I don't have a right to tell them in the first trimester of pregnancy what they should do. And I'm glad your parents didn't feel that way. <laughs> well, that's how we're going to go. I'm trying to have a civil discussion and point out some things that I think should the, the body should know. I have no doubt this bill is going to pass. You have the votes. Y'all have the votes to pass it. Um, and I, I, I'm, again, the hypocrisy that we want to try to cut government interference, cut government spending, but you're bringing forth a bill that we know is going to cost the state millions of dollars to defend. And there's a reason no other state has done this. Well, the state of Mississippi will have an opportunity to consider it in November on their ballot. Oh, good. We're right there with Mississippi again. That's fine. Um, but there's no exception to save the life of the mother. No exception. So if that pregnancy... That's simply because this only that, Well, I didn't, I didn't kill in the my code. Too. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. There... If, Ladies and gentlemen, if one a woman, at a time, please. One at a time. One at a time. Well, I have the floor, don't I? Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, do. I didn't, um, trying to so there's no exceptions to save the life of the mother. So if continuation of that pregnancy will put the mother's life in jeopardy, too bad. Well, Ms. Todd, if I may, what, what I would encourage you to do is to bring an additional piece of legislation that would define the terms of pregnancy, how that defined. I'm, I'm perfectly satisfied with the current law we have. Yes, ma'am, I, I, I know you are. Because... Um, there's a reason that Roe v. Wade hasn't been turned over in these amount of times. And what I what I hear is that you don't respect the Supreme Court decision. Yeah. Um, and I'm all, you know, you can challenge whatever you want to. Believe me, I'd like to challenge, you know, some things that states have done myself. But I don't have the money to do that. Um, but I want people to, to hear what I'm saying. There's no exception to this to save the life of the mother. So, if continuation of this pregnancy puts her life in jeopardy, too bad. Too bad. Now, let's also take another scenario. Many times, women will choose abortion in the first trimester because the fetus will not be able to survive at birth. Or it could be so severely deformed that it would not have any quality of life. Now, if that's the case and the fetus is severely deformed, we're going to force the woman to carry that pregnancy to term. Even though that fetus may die 24, 48 hours after birth. And Ms. Todd, if I may remind you again, what this bill does is it simply defines what a person is. I know, and under the, I've looked at uh, under the 14th Amendment, yes, uh, which is Roe v. Wade was tried under the 14th Amendment, um, This, but this does define personhood, so therefore that fetus from the moment of inception, which is probably smaller than my fingernail, 
has all the rights and privileges that I do. Isn't that correct? Well, that's correct. Um, you know, I, I, I just am bothered. I'm bothered by a lot of things we've done in this body, but this one actually gets to me the worst. Because we, you, everybody in this chamber knows that when this bill passes, no doubt it will, that this bill will be litigated immediately. Immediately. And the state of Alabama, who is struggling to balance our budgets, to adequately fund the services to people who have been born, we're going to take money away from that in order to defend a law, a statute, that we know is unconstitutional. I, I just, that is bad policy in my opinion. Um, I'll remind you that at one time... Well, I, I didn't yield my time. Yes, ma'am. I'm not yielding my time on this. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, my main concern is many women who don't know they're pregnant uh, for a period of time. I, I've known people who didn't know they were pregnant until their seventh or eighth month of pregnancy. Um, we are now putting them in great harm and may actually prosecute them for murder in some instances. This is a bad bill. Bad bill. I respect your opinion. I respect the opinion of the people who oppose this on the opposing side. But let's get real. We're here to make good policy for the state of Alabama, and this isn't it. And I will be back. You know, we try to stand up and present another perspective, um, and but you know, we don't have the numbers to really have any impact. But we get, you know, getting up and and stating an alternate position. Mm -hmm. and that's what we'll continue to do. I'm trying to decide on this bill exactly what I want to do. Yes, sir. And I haven't been able to figure out because you said we're trying to define a person. Yes, sir. And we're going to define that in state law. Yes, sir. But how do we define a person? How do you define a person in this bill? Well, according to the bill, Mr. Knight, and I'll, I'll read it again, it simply says that to provide that the terms person as used in the code shall include all humans from the moment of fertilization and implantation in the womb. So fertilization of the egg and implantation of the egg in the womb, which also means that in vitro fertilization would be covered. Has this been defined anywhere else? No, sir. It, it, as I had mentioned earlier, only in Mississippi is it about to be considered by the people through an amendment. There is no other legislation. Now, I'm trying to figure out a way to help you with this. I, I, I think you really got good intentions, and, but uh, I think we probably need a little time to try to understand exactly what you're talking about because I'm a little confused about it. Um, and I think you'd get a little more support uh, if we had a little time to think about this and talk about it and see if we fully understand what you're trying to do. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to move that we carry over one and a half legislative day. All right, Chair, we can always All right. All right. Yes, sir. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to move that we carry over one legislative day. All right. Uh, Mr. Knight uh, moves that we carry this bill over one legislative day. All right. Uh, all those in favor of this motion say aye. Any opposed? All right, I believe the ayes have it. Uh, bill we carried over one legislative day. All right, uh, we'll call the next bill on today's special order. On page.